Welcome to this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. I'm your host, Leah Chang. On this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang, I'm taking you inside the opening night of Manhattan Theater Club's New York premiere of Kui Gwynn's Poor Yellow Rednecks. The New York Times critics pick Poor Yellow Rednecks is the sequel to Viet Gone and is also directed by May Adralis. Due to popular demand, it has been extended through December 3rd at New York City Center Stage 1. The cast of Poor Yellow Rednecks features John Hosh, Ben Levin, Samantha Kwan, John Norman Schneider, Maureen Sebastian, and Paco Tolson. Understudies include Jose Gamo, Rebecca Hirota, and Henman Rhee. We're going to thrive in this foreign land, but today we're going to do whatever we can to create a place where we both can stand, defying all the haters who say that we can. I'm climbing these ladders, adapting through disasters. No money in my pocket, but I'm rich where it matters. Whoa, stop till we won, son. Swinging for that home run, like the song says in the print. We get the job done. Poor yellow rednecks need to man respect. Ain't got a lot of money, but we're still damn perfect. Rise up, son, listen to our reason. We're crying the numbers while the rest of them are sleeping. Don't Poor got yellow rednecks need to got man a lot of respect. Cash. We got a lot of money. We demand respect Ain't got a lot of money But we still damn perfect Rise up, son Listen to our reason We're climbing the mountains While the rest of them are sleeping Get, get some time to say. All right, so I'm not going to fucking rap. Uh, I, think you spent, I think you spent enough fucking time tonight listening to my goddamn dumb rhymes, okay? So I'm not going to do that. So instead, I'm going to talk from my motherfucking heart for just a second. Uh, for most of you, uh, or not most of you, I actually don't know most of you here. Uh, for those who know me, eight years ago, you know my life was dramatically different than it is right now. And what very few of you know, except for maybe my manager Bradford, Will Harper, and my therapist, <laughs> was Vit Gone, this play that I had in my pocket, was going to be my last play ever. I was going to hang that shit up, because this writing life had equaled very zero dollars. <laughs> and then something miraculous fucking happened. May Adralis and five actors that I have spent so many years of my fucking life, putting my heart into, investing into, did something amazing for me. They transformed my fucking life with this play. They changed it completely. I'm not gonna give you the resume of what my life has been from eight years ago to now, but I will say that I thought that Vid Gone was this amazing thing that I could end everything on. It was a play about my family, with my chosen family that was developed by a community of actors that I've invested so much of my fucking life in. That I thought, you know what, if it's gonna end, this is the one to end it on. But instead, they gave me new life. And now eight years later, I'm here once again. And they have once again transformed my goddamn life. 
And I can't say that this, I don't know, I can't tell the fucking future, if poor Yellow Rednecks is going to become a staple of Asian American theater like Big Gone has become. But what I can say is it made me do, it made three things that happened already. And that's one, I fall in love back with theater because of this cast, because of May, because of this show. And two, I'm reminded once again how, what it means to be an artist without any censorship. And you got to see it tonight. And three, that this town, these artists, this city, this theater has now become my motherfucking home. It's never going to stop being my home. So thank you. Everyone who's got to see the goddamn show tonight. I do swear a lot. I'm sorry for that. Actually, I'm not sorry for that. So thank you so much. Fucking party. Enjoy your goddamn self. Because if you're at, I know it's an official Vampire Cowboy show, but if you're at a Vampire Cowboy show, VC, you fucking get drunk. So tonight, get drunk, have fun, and just have a fucking great time. Now, Mae Drellis is going to say some shit. Thank you for giving us this home. You really made this play, this, I don't know, this room, this theater, you gave, you, you fill us all with so much love and joy and I'm really grateful to be a part of this, yeah. of this home. Thank you. All right, great. Hui, the wildly inventive playwright and screenwriter for Marvel and Disney, known for his use of pop culture, pop music, and puppetry, reunites with his frequent director, Maya Dralis, for this funny, sexy, and brash new play. A young Vietnamese family attempts to put down roots in Arkansas, a place as different from home as it gets. A mom and dad balance big hopes and low-wage jobs as old flings threaten to pull them apart. It all makes for a bumpy road to the American dream. We're gonna thrive in this foreign land, but today we're gonna do whatever we can to create a place where we both can stand, defying all the haters who say that we can Climbing these ladders, adapting through disasters No money in my pocket, but I'm rich where it matters Won't stop till we've won, son Swinging for that home run Like the song says in the print We get the job done Poor yellow rednecks we demand respect Ain't got a lot of money, but we're still damn perfect Rise up, son, listen to our reason We're climbing mountains while the rest of them are sleeping Don't Poor got a lot of objects, we got a lot of cash We got a lot of Next we demand respect Ain't got a lot of money But we still damn perfect Rise up son, listen to our reason We're climbing mountains While the rest of them are sleeping I'm Alan Gilmore, I play Ebenezer Scrooge, Bah Humbug. What's Christmas time to you but a time for paying bills without money? Scrooge is a very unhappy, sad, empty old miser. But inside of that shell, he's a great guy, a soft guy, a vulnerable guy. He's haunted and three spirits that take him through the past, present, and the future. So he finds his, the child he was, and he's reborn. And that's the journey that brings everybody in to see A Christmas Carol. That it will melt even your cold constitution. And I think there's something about the way that Michael Wilson has adapted this. It brings an element of magical realism. The special effects and the spectacle, I think it's a beautiful marriage. And then also on top of that, it's just fun to have glitter falling from the sky and dancing and fog and smoke and it, it's joyful. A Christmas Carol is, is intended to show how much joy we all can have if we allow ourselves to come together and to be a part 
of a community and play our role in that community. I've always thought Christmas time when it has come around as a good time. This production really is a Hartford staple. Audiences are familiar with and are excited to see. To have a production that's been playing robustly for 23 years is, is just extraordinary. And I'm so grateful to the Hartford community and Hartford stage that we are able to tell it. To me, it's very interesting that Dickens wrote this very touching, moving tale as a ghost story. I, I love that, and I hope that people can walk out of the theater really kind of cherishing and feeling that warmth of their own humanity. It's not your grandmother's Christmas Carol, but your grandmother will love it. Tony, Grammy, and Emmy-winning Broadway deity, legendary activist, and iconic philanthropist Andre de Shields, business leader, Grammy-nominated artist, and humanitarian Chandrika Tandon, and three-time Grammy Award-winning record producer and songwriter Russ Tittleman received the Town Hall Friend of the Arts Awards at the Town Hall Friend of the Arts Gala held at the Harmony Club in New York on November 2nd. Since 1981, 
Town Hall has honored Friends of the Arts, those individuals or organizations whose contributions to the arts enrich our city's cultural life. All friends are not artists, and all artists are not friends. <laughs> but Andre De Shields, our next honoree, is most certainly vocal. I first met Andre De Shields when I wasn't yet a teenager. I began my life in the arts performing with the renowned La Mama Experimental Theater on the Lower East Side, a place where Andre had also appeared many times. And after a matinee one weekend, Lamar Alford, one of the adult members of the company, asked if I would travel uptown with him to visit a friend backstage at a Broadway show between their shows, and I eagerly accepted. I, re I remember distinctly climbing the well-worn stairs, navigating distressed hallways, and leading to a door of his dressing room. We entered, and Andre appeared in a fancy robe, patting his face with a towel after removing his makeup. He was very gracious and asked me some questions about the show Lamar and I were doing. And, uh, but mostly I just let the two friends, close friends, catch up, and I listened. And I watched this enigmatic figure, and I felt that amazing energy that Andre exudes. He isn't just a performer, he's a star. An apt description because whether it's on stage or just being in a room together, he shines. And he's been starring and shining on stages for decades and won just about every single accolade in the process. It's even more important to acknowledge that Andre paved the way for countless others, giving unforgettable performances in works that smashed old ceilings and broke new artistic ground. In recent seasons, Andre showed his range in both musical and dramatic roles to universal acclaim in Hades Town and in Death of a Salesman. Tonight, however, we aren't here just to recognize the performer. We're here to honor the man, his contributions and his dedication to the furtherance of art. If he has forged new paths, then he's always mindful to turn and offer a hand up to those who follow. This evening is about special people who understand that art is communication and who play a crucial role in that pursuit as listeners as mentors, and as megaphones. And this work will continue as a distinguished alumnus of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where he was bestowed an honorary doctorate. Mr. Shields has founded the Andre de Shields Fund for Transforming the Arts, an initiative to support the traditionally marginalized artists in pursuit of non-traditional expressions of art. To more fully express our deep respect and admiration, I'd like to read the inscription on this award. The Town Hall Foundation is privileged to present its Friends of the Arts Award to Andre de Shields in recognition of more than 55 year career as an acclaimed and beloved Emmy, Tony, and Grammy Award winning singer, actor, dancer, director, and choreographer for accomplishing your unparalleled work as an activist, educator, and philanthropist, for your advocacy for people living and affected by HIV and AIDS, for the benefit of students who experience cultural marginalization, for a lifetime of sharing your rare talent on stages, on screens, in classrooms, and in the halls of every shape and size, for creating memorable and show-stopping moments along the way. We hold in the highest regard the spirit you bring to every endeavor and the inspiration you've been throughout your illustrious career. We present you with the Friend of the Arts Award.
a man of my age has the right to sit at home, watch television, and think of nothing but sex, death, and money. And although I do have conversations with myself about those three categories, my ideal goal is to live as long as Methuselah. <laughs> Methuselah lived 969 years, the oldest person in recorded history as far as we know. I want to live for 970 years <laughs> because there's so much work to be done. And I would be remiss if I did not mention that a lot of that work has been done in this institution, the Harmony Club, which was founded initially in the 19th century to give a social home to those people who had been globally marginalized to the edges of society. And here we are these many years later, and it seems that the battle has not been won. I think most of us in this room would adhere to the three doctrines that seems to be on the list of this experiment for a multicultural democracy and they are diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah. Now that I have the best that Broadway can give me, the Tony, the best that television can do, the Emmy. The best that the recording industry can do, the Grammy. And I'm working on the O. Because I do want to be a goat. It is my distinct pleasure and also my responsibility to continue to work for those three denominations that I just mentioned. But what I am discovering now is that if we don't first recognize diversity here, what we think about one another, and if we don't first recognize equity here, the emotions we carry about one another, and if we don't first recognize inclusion here in our very guts, we're never gonna win that war. So at the age of 77, And as beautiful as I am, <laughs> I'm, go <laughs> I'm going to spend the next 600 years making sure that diversity, equity, and inclusion become the hallmark of at least the democracy we are experimenting with in these United Plantations of America. Amen. Thank you very much.
During the cocktail reception, Arkai, an award-winning electroacoustic duo fusing classical virtuosity with the electricity of a rock band, the spontaneity of a jazz combo, and the beauty of a string quartet, were the special guest artists who performed several numbers. On the Here first I floor. am having the thrill of my life with this young, very talented young man. And together we are known as Art. So here we are being our eyes. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Until next time.